a D, a D up to an F for sample, or an F down to a D as a melodic interval, or simply as harmonic interval, F to D. And in this case, it could also be an augmented second in another relationship. In D minor, for example, do up to May. However, in F sharp minor, it would be a, a, a major seventh down to a, a, a sharp five, a C up to a T. And one can hear very clearly the difference in the quality of this interval as it shifts. case now major uh, augmented second and now as a minor third now as an augmented second changing it again to instead of a minor third D up to F as being do up to May now actually putting it in another key. There's a minor third again. It's a mi so. And just playing with these intervals, developing whatever is necessary in order for you to be able to demonstrate what that particular uh, interval is. Now, going back to all the things you are, and approaching this from a hearing standpoint, as well as from just a physical standpoint, one, of course, first needs to, to be able to play the melody so they can hear the melody, and then paying attention to the form of the piece and also the root motion of the, of the chords. Uh, then listening to the melody internally, and then playing the root motion and listening to the relationship then between the melody and the root motion. Uh, the melody's beginning with this, if it's in A flat. The harmony being in F minor. Now, two things can happen. We can simply hear the root motion to the exclusion of the melody, or we can internally include the melody as we're playing the root motion. If we include the melody while we're playing the root motion, and the melody being starting on this pitch, we actually begin to hear what the qualities of these chords are, and further we begin to intuit the harmonic motion. Going on to the next part. If that's too difficult to do in the beginning, singing the melody while you're playing the harmonic motion can be of great assistance. Even quietly. Paying very, very much attention to the melody note, the melody tone, and the chord root, and what, is, what that relationship is. This first one, and the chord, is the melody tone is this, 
a del, and the root of the chord is an F. And listen to this, up to the D flat. Both minors. Major third. Major third again. Major third. Now. Again, with this G7, the melody note being an F, but this is a minor seventh up to a B, which is the third of the chord, but opening up an, an augmented fourth interval. And this is really, in this tune, a pivotal point for the tune. The first part has really been up in, has really been an A flat. But with the F sounding... Da, da, de. We have a modulation moving into a C. So again, not just hearing the pitches, but really intuiting what that tonal motion is. This first F being more of a la. La, 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 la. And then up to the B, which is more a T. T, T, do. So here's a case of an interval which, if we looked at it pitch-wise, is an augmented fourth. And we will hear it that way, but further, if we intuit it tonally, it has a sense of a la up to a T. To a T. Now that's curious, because la up to T in a diatonic scale is a major second. But here we have an interval of an augmented fourth in which the tones are not consistent with the pitch interval. And I bring that out because I think this is what really, really makes the difference between what I mean by a tone and tonal motion and a pitch and pitch order. Uh, the ability to hear this moving not as just at the first pitch, that is, being related to D-flat, the second pitch being related to C, allows us to move more deeply into, into the tonality of whatever is there. If we're going through this piece, what I discovered was that there are basically four major tonal areas. First one in A-flat, second one in C, third one in E-flat, the fourth one in G, well, actually five, and then the last one in E, with a turnaround going back to the top with a C, seven chord, to the F minor. In learning a piece like this, is, Dan, I realized that there was a way of organizing it mentally in such a way that regardless of what key it was going to be played in, I, there was a kind of map, at least a mental map of what it, what it, it, it involved. So, for example, uh, this was quite some time ago I did this, but if somebody mentions the tune All the Things You Are, I generally, first thing that comes up for me is a major seven, A flat, as uh, a major seven chord, starting on the tonic, and then coming down a minor third with a turnaround to the C. So, if it was in E, for example, it would be an E major. That's major seven in E. Uh, coming down to a, to a minor third, and then down to a major third of, of, for the chord coming back to the beginning. So no matter what key it was in, uh, there was already a, a, a mental map of the root order and actual uh, chord progression. Uh, then it just required hearing the harmony or hearing the tonal order instead of thinking of the chords. Again, if the first part is an A flat, then the, in, in all the things you are, for example, then the harmonic motion this whole first part is in A flat. So hearing the harmonic motion, basically intuiting the movement in A flat, one isn't restricted to simply thinking chord, and then B flat minor, and then E flat seven and then A-flat, and then D-flat major, and then G7. But rather hearing the harmonic movement internally so that when 
one is improvising, one simply affirms or reaffirms that harmonic movement. flat. But then what I also discovered was that to d develop a more rigorous understanding of the fingerboard is to s play it in a key that it isn't played in. Uh, and simply play it through all the keys actually. Uh, one, uh, the, it's very re rarely played in uh, C. So by, having an, by playing the melody in C, and then by understanding what the harmonic scheme is, having a mental map of that, and then understanding and hearing and intuiting what the harmonic sense of it is about, just begin improvising in that, in that, in the key of C. Uh, the first chord in the key of C then begins on A minor, and basically instead of hearing an A minor, D minor, G7, to C major, to F major, to B7, to E minor, is really hearing a harmonic movement, as it would be in A flat, of six minor to two minor, to five seven, to one major, to four <coughs> major, and now to a five of a B7 and down into E major. One could pick any number of keys, you pick E, B, and that could be a very useful way of simply learning, uh, getting a better command of the fingerboard and reinforcing an under intuitive understanding of harmony and also of harmonic movement. I've been asked many times about uh, uh, from different students of uh, the relationship between scales and chords and what works with what works. And to me, there is some value in simply understanding what the pitch order or a scale, what the relevance that has with a given chord or chord structure. But without intuiting what the function is, that is to say a C7 as a one function or a four function or a five function, the scales themselves leave a lot to be desired. Um, in fact, if we just function on the scales through the exclusion of the function, it seems to reduce our options or the possibilities of something much uh, wider than that to be available. And for every rule that you can come up with about what works with a given chord or a scale, there's going to be someone who breaks it and breaks it in a meaningful way. <laughs> 